Okay, six six so end display one oh one um part one. This one should be really really useful if you know pretty much nothing about end display but you're looking at getting up and running. We'll go through some of the key concepts of setting up end display. This will be just a case of setting up the main computer that is then gonna send out the imagery to the other computers to render in really high resolution for the screens. So kind of setting up the master config master computer we're going to use ip addresses to theoretically send this out to other computers i'm not going to cover the switchboard side of things but this will get you up and running within unreal creating a nice curved led wall from unreal assets so let's jump into it so what i'm going to start by doing i've just opened up the epic launcher i'm going to start with a whole new project because using some of the end display assets that they give you from the start can be really really helpful especially in terms of UV unwrapping your screens. It gives you some really good test projects. So I'm going to go to film, video, and live events, and I'm going to use the end display starter project. Give your project a name. Keep that starter content tick. I'm not going to do ray tracing yet, but you can enable this pretty easily at a later stage. Awesome. So here we are in the kind of end display sample project. It's giving us a really simple example here, uh, and feel free to kind of explore this a little more. So this end display config uh, scene is really, really cool. You get these sample end display config actors uh, in, if you go into your content browser and go content and go example configs, you can actually choose from loads of different things. So yeah, here's like a cave type config. So that's really cool if you're looking at doing projection mapping across all four corners of a room or all six, six faces of a room. These configs are really cool, really useful, and you can just drag them straight in and they'll be they'll be kind of ready to go. All these configs kind of act in terms of having, they have an origin point and then they have all these screens and they work in a really nice way where they reference the kind of relative location from the origin. So that's how you want to do all your camera tracking if you're tra mapping this to a real world camera. I won't go fully into that, there's loads of documentation on black magic and things like that if you're getting into camera tracking and stuff. But yeah, that's the kind of basic thing of it. You got this origin point and then you've got the relative distance to the screens. You can see these all update in real time. That's really cool. And yeah, some of these configs might be might be what you're after. It might be the exact measurements you're after. What I'm going to do, however, is use this curved wall example, which they've actually used in this Unreal Engine uh, tutorial, but they haven't actually dis they haven't actually supplied the uh, mesh for this in the tutorial. I had to dive really deep through loads of documentation to actually find a downloadable version of this curved wall example so hey and there's there's a bit of a model of documentation going on here but if you google in camera vfx quick start and go here um scroll all the way down to here you can download this curved wall example mesh so this is a really nice uv mapped mesh where it's a flat image but it spans across this curved wall nice and even and they've packed their uvs into multiple channels which i'll go into in a sec this curved wall might be better for your for your use case um, it's really up to you what you want to use in terms of measurements and setups it's all based on your real world camera position and what you're actually projecting onto so you need to kind of do your measuring and things like that but i'm going to use this curved wall example for now so if I go open level, I've actually got this test level set up where I've got this nice kind of outdoor scenario. I've also got this car here because I was experimenting, experimenting with that, but don't be confused with that. For now, we are literally just doing background stuff. Obviously, the idea being that the all the VFX is happening in camera. So instead of in post, we're doing it in camera. That's why I see in camera VFX. So you can drag, so you can drag that curved wall FBX right in. I really quickly also made a ceiling because it didn't really come with a ceiling. And for some reason they seem to kind of chop off the corners. I think it's to kind of save uh, screen space, save rendering resources and things like that. So I just made this other mesh that's, it's a bit easier to UV, UV unwrap a mesh like this. Um, you can look that up pretty easily. If you want that download, let me know, but that's pretty easy to make. Um, so we have these two, we have these two curved walls have these two curved walls when we place them in they're nicely slotted together in the same place they line up nice but we're not going to place them in there let's go back to content and go back to the example configs i'm going to create a new version of what i've got here i'm going to go end display config create one of those and i'm going to create it new from scratch click finish i'm going to prefix it with nd prefix it with ndc and go curved wall example two 
and double click that and we can go into this kind of config editor so here we got this whole point of origin thing so that's going to be the reference point this config file can go out to what's called switchboard which basically takes this config file uh, understands the kind of relative location the position of the origin compared to the screens and it gives you all your camera tracking data so that's why this is set up in this kind of config file scene here so let's get rid of this original screen here compile save i'm gonna just drag in my uh, meshes drag in those two onto the origin and they got some back face culling so you might not see them straight away but they're over here and you can control click both of these space bar to be able to rotate I'm gonna rotate it 180 and just put this neatly to the back corner of my config here you don't have to put this in the back corner depends on your shot but yeah there you go you got your screens in that's really nice so now we've got these clusters um this just represents the kind of awesome stuff you can do with different ip addresses rendering sharing the rendering resources across multiple machines can be really really useful so what we can do is right click add new cluster node and you can see we get a host ip address so for now this is just my current ip address you can set the resolution of your of your screen so that's really useful for getting the best quality out of each computer that you might be using you can do enable sound you can do full screen which i'm going to check for now my size is just going to be 1920 by 1080 and that will set a size for now i'm going to press lock uh, but this is all super editable you can always tweak all of these values so just add that for now and we get this we get this representation of our first host here this is my current screen you got a node inside here that you can always stretch out and reposition and right here you can see that if i put this back to 1920 it's going to snap back so now i got our vp which is our viewport viewport one so we can get these settings up here we go type we can go mesh we select our mesh go wall left and we can we can figure out our size so what i what i might do is just divide this by two and divide this by two here as well and click that lock so we can just kind of resize this a bit easier you can also hold shift for that but so we want 1920 divided by two so 960 by 541 so now we've so now our one screen will be rendering out this and everything else will be blank space so let's fill the rest of our blank space with this other mesh so what we can do is right click here and go add new viewport and this will give us the same settings that we had up here but for this new one we can go full hd or whatever your screen is and here we can set mesh and set that as right and position i can just right now just add on that 960 on the x-axis and click add and i've accidentally not resized this one yet but that's fine we can always edit it i can lock that divide that by two and then i just need to go back to my node and make sure this is set back to 1920 Sorry, 920 by 1080. Just unlock that quickly and relock that. So now we're nicely using these pixels to render out these two screens. That's the most kind of definition I'm going to get off of my single 1920 by 1080 computer, but that's cool. Um, what I'm going to do is just add my control control space bar to just bring up this uh, content drawer. I'm just going to add my uh, ceiling as well. So I've got the ceiling just for some example imagery. Uh, this uh, needs to be I'm going to add this just as an example as a new uh, host so right click here go add new cluster node and I'm just gonna you will you will be able to find out your IP address I think you can just google it or you can go on the command prompt and type ipv4 config uh, I'm just going to put a two here just to tell this that there's another IP here just a pretend pretend one for now I'd have to set that properly for my actual computer IP address. So add that, and now we've got this second second host uh, kind of node and viewport up, which is really nice. So this viewport here, I'm gonna set this to mesh and ceiling. And yeah, that could, in theory, just be the full 920 by 1080. I don't think that's how you would actually do it, but just to show you the basic setup of these end display configs like that. And, you know, it's pretty malleable. It's pretty easy to change and move around. This red is warning me that I, I'm outstaying my welcome, the sizing of this. So I'm just going to go back to 920 by 1080, uh, lock that off again, and divide it by 2 again. And the offset needs to be 960. So we're back in the, back in the right place. Um, I've shown you this host here. 
but I, I am just going to delete that one for now because it's just going to take resources for me that I don't want taken. And I need to reassign this one to a new viewport. So add new viewport, mesh, uh, ceiling, lock this off. I'm going to divide that by two again. And just bring this node back down to the right size. Cool. So nice. There we are. That's sort of, can I save that? Okay, that's one pixel off the edge there. So I just had to count the vertical, vertical pixels there. Cool. So they're all even and good. They're not overlapping. That's sort of some examples of how you might settle that, settle that up. Uh, we can add a new in-camera VFX camera. So this is our digital rendition of what our real world camera would be doing, where the offset would be and all of that good stuff. And with this IC VFX camera, we get a frustum. This frustum is interesting because it doesn't look the same as the curved walls. Uh, that's because the curved walls are giving the overall kind of HDR kind of data. So right now we're looking at HDR, so it's kind of replicating, replicating that kind of data. This frustum takes into account the camera's field of view and everything. So if you're doing like a nice close up and you got someone stood in between the camera and the wall here, you've actually got the really nice, really nice camera's field of view kind of rendition of what's going on as well. This is now everything that's required for our ICVFX uh, setup. We've got the end display config. Again, this is going to be a file that we can send out, send out all the data at this uh icvfx camera can be set to another gpu so you could have more than one icvfx camera and to avoid crashing and things like that you could be rendering them on different gpus you just need to set this to like zero or one so this is currently minus one so it's just selecting the first gpu in the order but you could go if you had two gpus set up you could you could select zero you could press zero for the first gpu in your system or one for the second gpu in your system so that's pretty much everything we have for our ic vfx setup super cool uh we can now just drag this into our scene can spin this around and we've got this very cool rendition good for me in this current kind of preview scenario because i um you don't have that much resources just on my single computer but obviously the idea idea with this end display is that it will be spanning multiple computers and multiple gpus so you're using using that ability with the end display